Hey friends, this is Akshi Sharma today and the topic I have taken today is of conservative dentistry and we are going to do fundamentals of cavity preparation today. So as we all know, cavity is an outline form in which the caries is excavated and it is restored. So there is always a conservative cavity preparation. Now what does a conservative cavity preparation means? That means there should be a minimal extension of the cavity walls. That clearly states that the cavity walls should be minimally extended or just the carious part should be excavated. The stronger the sound tooth structure is present, the healthier will be the tooth remaining and the restoration will have a good retentive as well as a resistance form. Then comes rounded internal line angles. The internal line angles should always be rounded in cases of amalgam restoration. Whereas in cases of cast gold restoration, we can think of a beveling or of a rounding or giving an angle to the restoration. But most of the times, the internal round angles are always rounded. Now, the margins should always be supra gingival margins. What do you mean by supra gingival? The margins can be of three types. They can be supra gingival, that is, the finished or the cavity preparation is above the gingival margin. It can be uh, a pical to the contact area, but it is coronal to the gingiva. And usually, it is seen that uh, it should be 3 mm above the alveolar crest. And in cases of class 2, I am talking. And uh, then the margins can also be gingival that is it is contacting the gingiva and it can be subgingival that means it goes deep into the gingiva the most convenient form is the supra gingival margin because there is a lot of techniques that we can prefer using supra gingival margins there is no problem in doing a restoration while facing an uh, isolation a good isolation is always seen in supra gingival margins the restoration has a very good retentive form and so on are its properties. Next we are going to classify caries and we are going to uh, classify certain terms. Number one is pit and fissure caries. In pit and fissure caries what we see is imperfect coalescence of the enamel crystals. That means the caries is processes are inhibited or excavated by the pits or the grooves or the fissures of the tooth. It is usually seen in the premolars and the molars in their pits and fissures on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Now what is the main point that objective point of view from pit and fissure sealant? There is a triangle formed and the carious process of the enamel is always greater or it is equal to the caries and uh, that means the caries is progressing into the forward direction whenever the base of the triangle is in the dental no enamel junction and the apex is in the enamel surface that means it is a pit and fissure caries whereas in cases of smooth surface caries it occurs in the unclean area where there is a lot of plaque and there is a very bad or poor oral hygiene it consists of the smooth areas be it buccal or lingual or the proximal surfaces these are not plaque retentive areas but due to the unclean surfaces of the tooth or the oral hygiene is not so good so the smooth surface caries occur the smooth surface caries its base is along the enamel surface whereas its apex is pointing to towards the dentino enamel junction. So this is a basic difference between the pit and fissure caries as well as the smooth surface caries. It is very important from the objective point of view. Now next is the residual caries. Residual caries is a caries which is left behind after the cavity preparation or the restoration. It can be done iatrogenically in cases of indirect pulp capping like we keep some of the affected dentine underneath the restoration and we place some medication so that the reparative dentine can be formed. Whereas it can be kept also by the mistake of a dentist or a doctor that all the caries is not being removed. So it forms a residual caries. Now comes the forward and the backward caries as I've stated before. In forward caries what happens? The enamel involvement of the caries is always more or it is equal to that of dentine. Whereas in backward caries the dentinal involvement 
of the carious process is always more than the enamel involvement. So hence we diagnose them as a forward or a backward carious. It is based on the direction of the progression of the carious process. Now come to the root and senile carious. It is seen in the geriatric patients or in old age patients in which gingival recession has occurred in their tooth. So due to the gingival recession and the low wear resistance of the cementum, the carious process can occur and it is the most rapid form of the carious. Mind my words the root caries or senile caries is the synonym it's the most rapid form of the caries it spreads rapidly and it creates defects in the tooth now certain other types of caries they can be recurrent or secondary caries Recurrent as the name suggests that means the caries which is occurring again and again. So recurrent can occur due to the micro leakage or the poor marginal restoration or if the residual caries is present it can extend deep into the pulpal tissues. So the recurrent or the secondary caries that means a tooth which has been restored is always is again and again showing the caries process. So that caries is known as recurrent or secondary caries. The next form of caries is acute or rampant caries. Acute processes as we know they are the most symptomatic processes and they rampant that is they, they progress aggressively. So the features, clinical features that we can see in acute or rampant caries it is light colored and it is always infectious that means the dentine which is uh, getting into the caries process is always infected and in cases of chronic or slow caries that means a slowly progressing which takes time it does not even induces any pain or more or less a very small or very less amount of pain it is discolored and it is fairly hard and it is hard to remove even there is no pain on excavation of the chronic caries now we are going to talk about the various angles in the fundamentals of cavity preparation number one is the line angle the line angle as it states it is the angle or the junction of the two walls that forms a line that means the junction of a two surface they form a line angle of a tooth or a cavity preparation then comes the point angle point angle is a point that is present at the junction of the three walls in all the three planes that can be transverse oblique or sagittal wherever these three points meet they form a point angle then can be internal line angle internal line angle is a line angle whose apex points into the tooth and similarly the external line angle is a line angle whose apex points away from the tooth so it's all based on the direction of the apex if the apex is towards the tooth it is internal and if it is away from the tooth it is external line angle the cavo surface angle we have read this word everywhere but i don't hope everyone to remember or to know what actually does a cavo surface angle means a cavo surface angle is an angle or the junction of the preparation of a cavity wall and the sound tooth structure that means it is a junction in which the wall meets two walls meet actually which one are, uh, these two walls are number one of the sound tooth structure from one side and from the other side it is of the prepared cavity so wherever these two walls meet this is known as cavo surface angle now talking about the walls walls can be axial wall axial wall is the one which is always parallel with the long axis of teeth like in class 1 cavity preparation, the facial, lingual, mesial or distal walls are the axial walls as they are always parallel to the long axis of teeth. And in class 2 cavities, besides these four walls, the proximal box that is created in class 2, the gingival wall which is again parallel to the uh, long axis of teeth is also the axial wall. So it can vary from the type of tooth preparation. Then comes the pulpal wall. Pulpal wall is always perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and occlusal of the pulp. That means the floor of the cavity usually forms the pulpal wall as it is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and it is perpendicular to the occlusal of the tooth. The occlusal of the tooth and the long axis usually coincide. Then comes floor or seat. 
when the cavity wall is perpendicular to the occlusal surface as we stated in the pulpal wall. So it forms the floor of the cavity or the seat of the cavity. Then comes the enamel wall. When the cavity preparation is created to the depth where in the enamel the cavity is finished, so that is known as an enamel wall and if the cavity depth goes till the dentine it forms a dentinal wall. Then another classification is of simple cavity, compound cavity and complex cavity. Simple cavity if only one surface is involved, compound cavity if two surfaces are involved and complex cavity if, if three or more surfaces are involved. Then according to the Sir G. V. Black classification of cavity preparation, the most important classification, this you have to keep in mind always be it subjective point of view or an objective point of view. Now it includes class 1 that is restoration on the occlusal surfaces of molars and premolars and the facial and lingual surfaces of the molars and the lingual surface of maxillary incisors. That means class 1 is further divided into class 1A, class 1B and class 1C. 1A is on the occlusal surface of the molars and premolars that is of course getting into pit and fissures. Then 1B is along the facial and lingual surfaces of the molars and 1C is along the lingual surface of just the maxillary incisors. Class 2 is the restoration on the proximal surface of the posterior teeth. Class 3 is the restoration on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth. That does not involve the incisal edge. Take that into your mind. Class 3 does not involve the incisal edge. Whereas class 4 is the restoration on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth which involves the incisal edge. Alright. Class 5 is the restoration on the gingival third of facial or lingual surfaces of all teeth, be it anterior, posterior, upper or lower. And class 6 is the restoration on the incisal edge of anterior teeth or occlusal cusp height of the posterior teeth. So this is the classification of uh, cavity preparation given by Sir G. V. Black. The new, newly modified classifications are based on sight as well as sight. Based on site, it is divided into three parts, that is site 1, which includes the pit and fissures, smooth surface of the enamel, buccal pits of the mandibular molars and lingual pits of the maxillary molars. It also includes erosion lesions on the incisal edges and the occlusal surfaces. Then site 2, it involves the contact areas and site 3, it involves the gingival areas. Now based on the size, it can be divided into four, size 1 is minimal or a point lesion size 2 is a moderate lesion that is there is sufficient sound tooth structure present to detain the restoration in size 3 there is an enlarged cavity that is the cavity design has to be modified according to the amalgam or the composite or the cast metal or an inlay preparation the modification is to be done because there is weak supporting structure to support restoration and in class 4 there is extreme cavity preparation that is the tooth is largely decayed and it is the weakest tooth structure that can even require cusp capping or a crown on it. So this was it. Now uh, the steps in cavity preparation will be continuing in our next video. So keep on reading. I have actually extracted all these points from by reading the different varies of books and I hope it will uh, obviously help you in objective and with God grace you will definitely clear your MDS entrance. So stay good. Stay hardworking and please listen to the videos. Thank you.